All right, these are our pre-lab notes for the fetal pig dissection. So first of all, a question you may have, and it's very common and totally relevant, is why are we dissecting fetal pigs? So first of all, fetal pigs are a wonderful example of mammalian anatomy. They exemplify a lot of the typical mammalian characteristics, and most human characteristics they also have, even to the, you know, skeletal and musculature aspects. Even though pigs are quadrupeds, they have, they walk on four legs, and humans are bipeds, we walk on two. Fetal pigs are also still at an age of development where their bones are cartilage, so that makes them really easy to dissect with our classroom tools compared to something with fully developed bones. And another advantage of fetal pigs is that they are recycled into the educational and scientific economy uh, rather than produced for science. Uh, when pregnant sows are harvested for their meat, the fetal pigs are preserved rather than becoming waste. When we're doing the dissection, we need to remember that these specimens are preserved in chemicals, so we'll be wearing safety goggles exclusively and all the time. Never take your goggles off from the beginning of when the fetal pigs are being passed out to, at, you know, until everyone's cleaned up. You need to have your safety goggles on. Lab aprons and gloves are worn to protect your skin and clothing. No horseplay will be tolerated under any circumstances since the lab does not just include chemicals but also sharp instruments. Everyone should remain at their lab station unless they are cleaning or just in case, I might call people over to look at something specific to a particular specimen, but often you will always stay at your lab station. And for the sake of your classmates that aren't so comfortable with the lab and because it's just ethical to these animals, please treat them with respect. Uh, never pick them up like puppets or make jokes about eating them or any jokes about them really at all. And finally, if you get chemicals on your skin, remove your gloves and rinse your arm or hand immediately and send a group member to let me know. If you cut yourself, the same rule applies. You need to send someone to let me know and go wash your hand. And on that note, never cut towards someone's hand, yours or someone else's. Uh, the scissor and scalpel should always be pointed away from people. Um, so just be very, very careful of that. I almost always see people cutting towards a classmate during this lab. Um, and those gloves are not science fiction. They're not going to protect you from cuts. And finally, look out for each other. Ask for help when you need it. And um, be specific about what you need from your classmates if you'd like them to do something to help you. As my sister likes to say to her second and third graders, use your words. So for the procedures, the first thing is be careful. This is really an art. If you do it beautifully and well, it can be really, really cool and really fun. But if you make a mess of things, well, that's what you have on your hands. You have a mess. And it's not fun very quickly for me or for you. You're going to start with internal observations and follow, uh, or start with external observations, sorry, and follow up with the internal observations. So you'll be following a checklist. And then when it comes time to dissect, you'll almost always use, first and foremost, the dissection scissors. You almost never use a scalpel. Dissection scissors are made for cutting soft tissue and are also helpful when separating tissues and organs because they're so precise compared to a scalpel. They have that little fine point. Scalpels are what you use for you know, general incisions. They're good for making cuts into organs that you've already removed from the body. I will ask you to remove the lungs and the heart. That might be a good time to use the scalpel, or at least the scalpel in addition to the dissection scissors. When opening the abdomen of the pig, never use a scalpel. So when you're going from the external to the internal anatomy, never ever use a scalpel. First of all, because cutting too deeply will cause you to damage any underlying organs. And second, because every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So when you press down to cut with a scalpel, you're going to send preservative chemicals up into your face. Please don't do it. And finally, probes and forceps are great tools for manipulating or pointing to tissues, so definitely take advantage of those. 
When it is time to observe the internal anatomy of the pigs, you're going to have it laying with its ventral side up, and your first incisions will be around the umbilical cord, either here or here. I like to start there because you can take the umbilical cord in one hand and kind of tug it gently upwards so that you can cut into the body without damaging the organs underneath. Uh, some of the next cuts you might make are around the umbilical cord, down towards the legs, and up around the rib cage. That will open up enough for you to be able to observe the abdominal cavity. Um, you really want to make sure you cut, you know, all the way down and around to really your dissection tray um, to give yourself a lot of room to view and move around um, inside. When you're ready to observe the thoracic cavity and you've fully observed the abdominal cavity, you'll have to cut up through the diaphragm and the rib cage. So sometimes, depending on the age of the pig, that takes a little bit more force, um, but I think our pigs are going to be on the younger side. That will allow you to, you'll see ribs as you cut up into the thoracic cavity, and then you'll want to cut up around the arms so that you can fold those flaps back. Um, sometimes it's easier just to actually cut these flaps away, but that's up to you and your group. And then you'll want to also, if you want to observe the esophagus, you have to do those two upper neck incisions. So that's mainly the incisions you'll need to make to get a good view of the internal anatomy. And one of the really cool things we'll be doing is removing the heart and lungs from the thoracic cavity so you can view them easier. And that heart is four-chambered, just like the human heart. So you've got a right and a left side with atria and ventricles on both sides. So you're going to take your scalpel and following the plane of this slide here, you would cut through all four chambers, being very careful of your hands. Again, don't cut into the palm of your hand, but that'll allow you to see all four chambers on the inside, which is very, very cool. So I'll see you soon in lab.